Drawn Together is a great show, and if you don't agree, then you might want to click off this video because you're not gonna get it. I think that the show is really misunderstood. Except the third season, that definitely deserves all the flack it gets. Maybe someday I'll go into more detail as to why I think this, but as for right now, I'm gonna talk about Super Nanny, which, in my personal opinion, is not only the funniest episode of the entire show, but it's also the best example of what Drawn Together does right, and also what it does wrong. Not the episode itself, I think it's near perfect, but it also highlights some of the missteps that the show would take in the third season, and also sometimes earlier before that. So let me tell you why Drawn Together Super Nanny is the perfect Drawn Together episode. So first off, what's this episode about? Well, like most Drawn Together episodes, it's not about one thing, but two. The main story is about Captain Hero, what a shock. He sees the Super Nanny show on TV and thinks that she's some kind of superhero that wants to out-super him, so he ends up getting Super Nanny called to the house only for him to get treated like one of the kids on the show, and he ends up straightening up and flying right, until he gets in trouble, sent to the naughty stool, Super Nanny's main punishment of choice, and then realizes that gasp, Super Nanny isn't actually a superhero, but a super villain. Her main goal is to trick all the superheroes into staying on the naughty stool so she can use her army of super disciplined children to storm the White House and take over the United States. On the other hand, we got the subplot, which actually has Ling Ling, and I'm gonna get into why that's such a big deal in a little bit. But after a disastrous driving test, Ling Ling peels his eyes back and suddenly becomes the most capable Asian in the entire world. But then this makes him realize that he's sacrificing Asian culture. He's making his people fat, lazy, and bad at math. Oh no! On the surface, this sounds like a typical drawn together episode with nothing really to make it stand out, but it's all about what it does right. This script is one of the most solid. First off, let's start with something easy. Ling Ling. I've said it time and time again, but I'm going to say it one more time. Ling Ling was the least utilized member of the Drawn Together gang, mostly because he can't really talk. Yes, I know, he can speak that weird semi-Asian language, but because he doesn't speak English, he's the most difficult character to write for. Trust me, I know that full well. I had to write for him with Drawn Together High Would Have Made It, and it was not easy. And a lot of the times before this, when Ling Ling got a subplot, it was basically either one of two things. Either it was him sharing it with somebody else and they were kind of using him as a prop or a tool like in the other cousin, or in the second episode where it's barely relevant at all. So Ling Ling actually gets something to do here and is a legitimate character, which is always great to see. That's actually one of the aspects I'd like to applaud Clum Babies for. That was the very first time we got to see Ling Ling be a legitimate character 100%. And this not only continues what we got in that episode, but expands on it and makes it even bigger, sillier, and also more provocative because it's drawn together come on it's not a church there's also captain hero he's the reverse ling ling he's the most utilized character in all of drawn together and in fact if you ask a lot of fans they got pretty tired of him honestly because a lot of the time it's just kind of the same thing over and over again. Captain Hero sees something, misinterprets it, or gets a little too invested, and then goes crazy. Even some of the great episodes have this problem, and yeah, Super Nanny has this too, but Captain Hero, for one, actually gets to be a little bit competent at the end when he saves the country, even if he is still a complete idiot while doing it, but the episode isn't about Captain Hero going absolutely insane and people have to stop him. Again, even great ones have this, like Lemonade's Walk, and while it worked there, it wouldn't keep working over and over again so they manage to shake up the formula. This time, Captain Hero actually goes along with someone else's routine, and no he's not playing the straight man exactly, but he's not going through this all alone. He's got Super Nanny and Xander to bounce off of a lot of the time, and it shakes things up. It makes it a lot more varied. And because we get to see Captain Hero in a different light, this episode stands out that much more. Speaking of doing characters right, that's something that Drawn Together up until this point, and then especially later on in the third season, would really struggle with. Character inconsistency. Some people say this is because they're trying to satirize tropes, but according to the creators in the infamous commentary scene in the movie, it's because they have absolutely no idea what to do. Basically, they get a case of writer's block and go, hey, you know what would be funny? A sex joke or a pop culture reference. Yeah, that's great. Let's put it in here now. Come on, hurry. We don't have any time. We're already behind schedule. This is also something that the Family Guy writers have struggled with a lot. According to Trey Parker and Matt Stone, a lot of the times for adult animation, 
what will happen is you hire a writer who has some really crazy idea for a joke and goes, well, how's about the characters do this? But it has absolutely nothing to do with either the plot or the character that they're trying to make fit into the joke. Basically, the joke comes before the character. Now, I get it. Drawn Together isn't some kind of serious drama or a soap opera, but still, character consistency is important. If a character can change depending on whatever the writers feel like happening, are they even a character at all? Even in some great episodes, like the one wherein there's a big twist part two, Xander and Tim sitting in a tree, or Gay Bash, there'll be at least one instance of a character totally betraying who they are. I've noticed that the most common ones tend to be either Xander or Clara. However, in Super Nanny, this doesn't happen once. It doesn't even come close. And not only is everybody really consistent, but they're on their A game as well. That speaks in part to the writing. This is some of the best writing the show has ever had. It's snappy, it's fast, and it knows how to be funny. It stays true to what the show is and who the characters are. It doesn't need to break the characters in order to force in some hit or miss gag. It can just be funny. That's all relying on the characters and situations to carry the jokes. Speaking of the jokes, I already mentioned that they work really well, but I really gotta commend it for not delving into, haha, pop culture reference territory, because that is really easy to do. Especially given the fact that the episode is poking fun at the Super Nanny TV show, which was pretty popular at the time. It's not just a case of, ha ha, look, this is a famous thing, ha ha, we're making fun of it, ha ha. It's not that. For example, take the season three episode, Waldor's, uh, the long title. The Terminator is a main character in this episode, and there is no joke except, ha ha, it's the Terminator. Please laugh. Super Nanny here isn't just the Super Nanny from the TV show. She starts off being an over-exaggerated version of herself on the show, and then she becomes a supervillain. Even Ling Ling's subplot gets this right. While admittedly, yes, it's basically boiled down to a ha-ha Asian joke, it goes so far with it that you can't help but laugh. But they actually have jokes to go alongside the crazy racism. The person who talks some sense into Ling Ling and gets him to become a full Asian again is Godzilla. Ling Ling sees everybody as an anime until he gets his eyes peeled back. And both of these plots are filled with the snappy word humor that makes the show work. This is also a small little note here, but everybody gets something to do. A lot of the times there will be characters, namely Ling Ling and sometimes Toot, who barely get anything to do in an episode at all and are just kind of relegated to cameos. I talked about this aspect when I reviewed Requiem for a Reality Show when I said that one of the things it did well was having all the characters fully on display. Even though Ling Ling kinda got the short end of the stick here and only appeared every so often, but still, Super Nanny I think does it just as well. Everybody kinda gets the same amount of focus, except for our two leads, who are obviously gonna be in the episode a whole lot more. Whenever somebody says that Drawn Together is a terrible show, or is nothing but sex and pop culture references and overall raunchy provocative humor, I like to point them to this one. Of course, it's not the first one I'd have them watch that's Requiem for a reality show, but this is the one I really think emphasizes Drawn Together's primary strengths the best. By watching this episode, you can see that it's more than just a shock show, it had some brains behind it. It knew how to be consistent, it knew how to be funny, and it knew how to do pop culture references much better than the competition. <laughs> Family Guy! This was also my inspiration for when I remade Drawn Together and how I would have made Drawn Together Season 3, but if you want to see that on display, go ahead and check that video out. Drawn Together may have struggled with some consistency things here and there, but still, I think that this really showed that if they just stopped focusing on gags and breaking the characters just for a cheap laugh, it probably could have been a lot more of a respected show. Oh well. What's done is done, and nothing will ever change my opinion on this episode, that being that it is the perfect drawn together episode for really basically any audience, so what are you waiting for? Go check it out, but first, please listen to the outro. By the way, this was our May Patreon raffle review, courtesy of Tanner Kapischke. If you'd like your idea for a Media Mementos video to come to fruition, then consider donating to our Patreon because it's only $2 a month for entry in the monthly raffle. That's the only way we take requests, so yeah. And speaking of Patreon, it's time to shout out our Patreon executive producers, Leaf Razor, Azarius, Whoopdo, Michaela Bellamy, MD the Dude, Blackjack, and Nightingale Wednesday Nightmare. Hello, this is Billy here, coming to you from a weird broadcast, interrupting your lovely outro to bring you comment of the day. So really, it's not an interruption, it's just an interruption depending on who you talk to, because, you know, my glorious voice coming in out of nowhere where it shouldn't be.
But anyway, this is a comment from Isaac the Monkey. Not only is he funny as hell with his mannerisms and movement, but I really dig his design. His robes have a nice shine and pattern to it. Really could have had a happy ending if he somehow made it to the surface world and traveled beyond and made his own version of Kensington in a marsh or forest, where he and his fellow amphibians can live like royalty. In case you don't know what he's talking about, he's talking about the Toad from Flushed Away, who was the subject of the character quest last weekend. And you know, I pretty much agree with him. Especially that robe, man. Holy crap, that robe is freaking dope. I and mean, maybe I'm not 100% for that happy ending. Well, for mostly because Le Frog and his beings just really don't deserve any of this crap. But again, it would have been kind of funny to see the toad in like a, the marsh or forest, like you said, and him just living with the sperm babies, just having a good time. Hell, maybe not even embracing much of the royalty stuff either. They're just living natural or something. Uh, take that as you will, okay? Yeah. Also, be prepped for this weekend. It's the How I Would Have Made Drawn Together. It's it's going along nicely. It's a lot of hard work. And you better like it.